Propaganda of the deed or propaganda by the deed, from the French propagande par la fête is specific political action meant to be exemplary to others and serve as a catalyst for revolution. It is primarily associated with acts of violence perpetrated by proponents of insurrectionary anarchism in the late 19th and early 20th century, including bombings and assassinations aimed at the ruling class, but also had nonviolent applications. These deeds were to ignite the spirit of revolt in the people by demonstrating the state was not omnipotent and by offering hope to the downtrodden, and also to expand support for anarchist movements as the state grew more repressive in its response. In 1881, the International Anarchist Congress of London gave the tactic its approval. Topic. Anarchist origins Topic. Various definitions One of the first individuals to conceptualize propaganda by the deed was the Italian revolutionary Carlo Pisacane who wrote in his Political Testament, 1857, that ideas spring from deeds and not the other way around. Mikhail Bakunin, 1814 to 1876, in his Letters to a Frenchman on the Present Crisis, 1870, stated that we must spread our principles not with words but with deeds, for this is the most popular, the most potent, and the most irresistible form of propaganda. The concept, in a broader setting, has a rich heritage, as the words of Francis of Assisi reveal, "...let them show their love by the works they do for each other, according as the Apostle says, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth." Some anarchists, such as Johann Most, advocated publicizing violent acts of retaliation against counter-revolutionaries because, "...we preach not only action in and for itself, but also action as propaganda." It was not advocacy for mass murder, but a call for targeted killings of the representatives of capitalism and government at a time when such action might garner sympathy from the population, such as during periods of government repression or labor conflicts, although most himself once boasted that, "...the existing system will be quickest and most radically overthrown by the annihilation of its exponents. Therefore, massacres of the enemies of the people must be set in motion." In 1885, he published The Science of Revolutionary Warfare, a technical manual for acquiring and detonating explosives based on the knowledge he acquired by working at an explosives factory in New Jersey. Most was an early influence on American anarchists Emma Goldman and Alexander Berkman. Berkman attempted propaganda by the deed when he tried in 1892 to kill industrialist Henry Clay Frick following the deaths by shooting of several striking workers. Beverly Gage, professor of U.S. history at Yale University, elaborates on what the concept meant to outsiders and those within the anarchist movement. To outsiders, the talk of bombing and assassination that suddenly pulsed through revolutionary circles in the late 1870s sounded like little more than an indiscriminate call to violence. To most and others within the anarchist movement, by contrast, the idea of propaganda by deed, or the attentat attack, had a very specific logic. Among anarchism's founding premises was the idea that capitalist society was a place of constant violence, every law, every church, every paycheck was based on force. In such a world, to do nothing, to stand idly by while millions suffered, was itself to commit an act of violence. The question was not whether violence per se might be justified, but exactly how violence might be maximally effective for, in Most's words, annihilating the beast of property that makes mankind miserable, and gains in cruelty and voracity with the progress of our so-called civilization. By the 1880s, the slogan, Propaganda of the Deed, had begun to be used both within and outside of the anarchist movement to refer to individual bombings, regicides and tyrannicides. In 1881, "'Propaganda by the Deed' was formally adopted as a strategy by the Anarchist London Congress. In 1886, French anarchist Clement Duval achieved a form of propaganda of the deed, stealing 15,000 francs from the mansion of a Parisian socialite, before accidentally setting the house on fire. Caught two weeks later, he was dragged from the court crying, Long live anarchy! and condemned to death. Duval's sentence was later commuted to hard labor on Devil's Island, French Guiana. In the anarchist paper Revolt, Duval famously declared that, Theft exists only through the exploitation of man by man. 
When society refuses you the right to exist, you must take it. The policeman arrested me in the name of the law, I struck him in the name of liberty. As early as 1887, a few important figures in the anarchist movement had begun to distance themselves from individual acts of violence. Peter Kropotkin thus wrote that year in La Revolte that, A structure based on centuries of history cannot be destroyed with a few kilos of dynamite. A variety of anarchists advocated the abandonment of these sorts of tactics in favor of collective revolutionary action, for example through the trade union movement. The anarcho-syndicalist, Fernand Pelloutier, argued in 1895 for renewed anarchist involvement in the labor movement on the basis that anarchism could do very well without the individual dynamiter, state repression including the infamous 1894 French Lois Scolaritz of the anarchist and labor movements following the few successful bombings and assassinations may have contributed to the abandonment of these kinds of tactics, although reciprocally state repression, in the first place, may have played a role in these isolated acts. The dismemberment of the French socialist movement, into many groups and, following the suppression of the 1871 Paris Commune, the execution and exile of many communards to penal colonies, favored individualist political expression and acts. Anarchist historian Max Netlau provided a more complex concept of propaganda when he said that Every person is likely to be open to a different kind of argument, so propaganda cannot be diversified enough if we want to touch all. We want it to pervade and penetrate all the utterances of life, social and political, domestic and artistic, educational and recreational. There should be propaganda by word and action, the platform and the press, the street corner, the workshop, and the domestic circle, acts of revolt, and the example of our own lives as free men. Those who agree with each other may cooperate, otherwise they should prefer to work each on his own lines to trying to persuade one the other of the superiority of his own method. Later anarchist authors advocating «propaganda of the deed» included the German anarchist Gustav Landauer, and the Italians Errico Malatesta and Luigi Galliani. For Gustav Landauer, «propaganda of the deed» meant the creation of libertarian social forms and communities that would inspire others to transform society. In «weak statesmen, weaker people», he wrote that the state is not something «that one can smash in order to destroy». The state is a relationship between human beings. One destroys it by entering into other relationships. In contrast, Errico Malatesta described propaganda by the deed as violent communal insurrections that were meant to ignite the imminent revolution. However, Malatesta himself denounced the use of terrorism and violent physical force, stating in one of his essays, Violence physical force used to another's hurt, which is the most brutal form of struggle between men can assume, is eminently corrupting. It tends, by its very nature, to suffocate the best sentiments of man, and to develop all the antisocial qualities, ferocity, hatred, revenge, the spirit of domination and tyranny, contempt of the weak, servility towards the strong. And this harmful tendency arises also when violence is used for a good end. Anarchists who rebel against every sort of oppression and struggle for the integral liberty of each and who ought thus to shrink instinctively from all acts of violence which cease to be mere resistance to oppression and become oppressive in their turn are also liable to fall into the abyss of brutal force. The excitement caused by some recent explosions and the admiration for the courage with which the bomb throwers faced death, suffices to cause many anarchists to forget their program, and to enter on a path which is the most absolute negation of all anarchist ideas and sentiments. At the other extreme, the anarchist Luigi Galliani, perhaps the most vocal proponent of propaganda by the deed. From the turn of the century through the end of the First World War, took undisguised pride in describing himself as a subversive, a revolutionary propagandist and advocate of the violent overthrow of established government and institutions through the use of direct action, i.e., bombings and assassinations. Galliani heartily embraced physical violence and terrorism, not only against symbols of the government and the capitalist system, such as courthouses and factories, but also through direct assassination of enemies of the people, capitalists, industrialists, politicians, judges, and policemen. He had a particular interest in the use of bombs, going so far as to include a formula for the explosive nitroglycerin in one of his pamphlets advertised through his monthly magazine, Cronaca Soversiva. 
By all accounts, Galliani was an extremely effective speaker and advocate of his policy of violent action, attracting a number of devoted Italian-American anarchist followers who called themselves Gallianists. Carlo Buda, the brother of Gallianist bombmaker Mario Buda, said of him, "'You heard Galliani speak, and you were ready to shoot the first policeman you saw." Illegalism Propaganda of the deed is also related to illegalism, an anarchist philosophy that developed primarily in France, Italy, Belgium, and Switzerland during the early 20th century as an outgrowth of anarchist individualism. The illegalists openly embraced criminality as a lifestyle. Influenced by theorist Max Stirner's concept of egoism, the illegalists broke from anarchists like Clement Duval and Marius Jacob who justified theft with a theory of individual reclamation. Instead, the illegalists argued that their actions required no moral basis, illegal acts were taken not in the name of a higher ideal, but in pursuit of one's own desires. France's Bono Gang was the most famous group to embrace illegalism. Topic. Relationship to revolution Propaganda of the deed thus included stealing in particular bank robberies, named expropriations, or revolutionary expropriations, to finance the organization, rioting and general strikes which aimed at creating the conditions of an insurrection or even a revolution. These acts were justified as the necessary counterpart to state repression. As early as 1911, Leon Trotsky condemned individual acts of violence by anarchists as useful for little more than providing an excuse for state repression. The anarchist prophets of the propaganda by the deed can argue all they want about the elevating and stimulating influence of terrorist acts on the masses. He wrote in 1911, theoretical considerations and political experience prove otherwise. Vladimir Lenin largely agreed, viewing individual anarchist acts of terrorism as an ineffective substitute for coordinated action by disciplined cadres of the masses. Both Lenin and Trotsky acknowledged the necessity of violent rebellion and assassination to serve as a catalyst for revolution, but they distinguished between the ad hoc bombings and assassinations carried out by proponents of the propaganda of the deed, and organized violence coordinated by a professional revolutionary vanguard utilized for that specific end. Sociologist Max Weber wrote that the state has a monopoly on the legitimate use of physical force. Or, in Karl Marx's words, the state was only the repressive apparatus of the bourgeois class. Propaganda by the deed, including assassinations sometimes involving bombs, named in French, machines infernales, hellish machines, usually made with bombs, sometimes only several guns assembled together, were thus legitimized by part of the anarchist movement and the first international as a valid means to be used in class struggle. The predictable state responses to these actions were supposed to display to the people the inherently repressive nature of the bourgeois state, delegitimizing it legitimacy being key. This would in turn bolster the revolutionary spirit of the people, leading to the overthrow of the state. This is the basic formula of the cycle protests repression protests, which in specific conditions may lead to an effective state of insurrection. This cycle has been observed during the 1905 Russian Revolution or in Paris in May 1968. However, it failed to achieve its revolutionary objective on the vast majority of occasions, thus leading to the abandonment by the vast majority of the anarchist movement of such bombings. However, the state never failed in its repressive response, enforcing various lowest sclerates which usually involved tough clampdowns on the whole of the labor movement. These harsh laws, sometimes accompanied by the proclamation of the state of exception, progressively led to increased criticism among the anarchist movement of assassinations. The role of several agents provocateurs and the use of deliberate strategies of tension by governments, using such false flag terrorist actions as the Spanish La Mano Negra, work to discredit this violent tactic in the eyes of most socialist libertarians. John Phyllis and Jim Bell are two of the best-known modern advocates, with the latter developing the concept of an assassination market—a market system for anonymously hiring and compensating political assassination. Notable actions April 4, 1866 – Dmitry Karakazov made an unsuccessful attempt on the life of Tsar Alexander II at the gates of the Summer Garden in St. Petersburg. As the Tsar was leaving, Dmitry rushed forward to fire. 
The attempt was thwarted by Osip Komisarov, a peasant born Hatter's apprentice, who jostled Karakazov's elbow just before the shot was fired. May 11, 1878 Max Hodel attempts to assassinate Kaiser Wilhelm I of Germany. His two attempts to shoot the monarch both fail, and he is apprehended and executed by beheading on August 15. August 4, 1878 Sergei Stepniak Kravchinsky stabs to death General Nikolai Mazentsov, head of the Tsar's secret police, in response to the execution of Ivan Kowalski. November 17, 1878 Giovanni Passanante attempts to assassinate with a dagger King Umberto I of Italy. It is the first attempted murder against the monarch and the first in the history of House of Savoy. Passanante is sentenced to death but his penalty is commuted to prison for life. While in jail, he goes insane and is taken to the asylum. February 1879 Grigory Goldenberg shoots Prince Dmitry Kropotkin, the governor of Kharkiv in the Russian Empire, to death. April 20, 1879 Alexander Soloviev attempts to assassinate Tsar Alexander II of Russia. The monarch spots the weapon in his hands and flees, but Soloviev still fires five shots, all of which miss. He is captured and hanged on May 28. February 17, 1880 Stepan Kalterin successfully blows up part of the Winter Palace in an attempt to assassinate Tsar Alexander. Although the Tsar escapes unharmed, eight soldiers are killed and 45 wounded. Referring to the 1862 invention of dynamite, historian Benedict Anderson observes that Noble's invention had now arrived politically. Kalterin is hanged on the orders of Alexander's son and successor, Alexander III, in 1882 after the assassination of a police official. March 1 Julian Calendar 1881 Alexander II is killed in a bomb blast by Narodnaya Volya. July 23, 1892 Alexander Berkman tries to kill American industrialist Henry Clay Frick in retaliation for Frick's hiring of Pinkerton detectives to break up the Homestead strike, resulting in the deaths of seven steelworkers. Although badly wounded, Frick survives, and Berkman is arrested and eventually sentenced to 22 years in prison. November 7, 1893 The Spanish anarchist Santiago Salvador throws two Orsini bombs into the orchestra pit of the Lysu Theatre in Barcelona during the second act of the opera Guillaume Tell, killing some 20 people and injuring scores of others. December 9, 1893 Auguste Valent throws a nail bomb in the French National Assembly, killing nobody and injuring one. He is then sentenced to death and executed by the guillotine on February 4, 1894, shouting, Death to bourgeois society and long live anarchy. A mort la societe bourgeoise et vive l'anarchie. During his trial, Valent declares that he had not intended to kill anybody, but only to injure several deputies in retaliation against the execution of Ravichol, who was executed for four bombings. February 12, 1894 Emile Henry, intending to avenge Auguste Valent, sets off a bomb in Café Terminus a café near the Gare Saint-Lazare train station in Paris, killing one and injuring twenty. During his trial, when asked why he wanted to harm so many innocent people, he declares, There is no innocent bourgeois. This act is one of the rare exceptions to the rule that propaganda of the deed targets only specific powerful individuals. Henry is convicted and executed by guillotine on May 21. June 24, 1894 Italian anarchist Sante Geronimo Casario, seeking revenge for Auguste Valent and Émile Henry, stabs Sadi Carnot, the President of France, to death. Casario is executed by guillotine on August 15. November 3, 1896 In the Greek city of Patras, Dimitris Matsalis, an anarchist shoemaker, attacks banker Dionysios Fragkopoulos and merchant Andreas Kalas with a knife. Fragkopoulos is killed on the spot, Kalas is seriously wounded. April 22, 1897 Pietro Acharito tries to stab King Umberto of Italy. He is sentenced to life imprisonment. August 8, 1897 Michel Angelillo shoots dead Spanish Prime Minister Antonio Canovas del Castillo at a thermal bath resort, seeking vengeance for the imprisonment and torture of alleged revolutionaries at the Monjuic Fortress. Angelillo is executed by Garat on August 20. September 10, 1898 Luigi Luceni stabs to death Empress Elizabeth, the consort of Emperor Franz Joseph I of Austria-Hungary, with a needle file in Geneva, Switzerland. Luceni is sentenced to life in prison and eventually commits suicide in his cell. 
July 29, 1900 Gaetano Bresci shoots dead King Umberto, in revenge for the Bava Bacari's massacre in Milan. Due to the abolition of capital punishment in Italy, Bresci is sentenced to penal servitude for life on Santo Stefano Island, where he is found dead less than a year later. September 6, 1901 Leon Cholgosh shoots U.S. President William McKinley at point-blank range at the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York. McKinley dies on September 14, and Cholgosh is executed by electric chair on October 29. Cholgosh's anarchist views have been debated. April 23, 1902 Luigi Galliani speaks to striking silk workers at a factory in Patterson, New Jersey, urging all American workers to declare a general strike and overthrow U.S. capitalist society. Galliani, who is wounded in the face when police open fire on the striking workers, is later indicted for inciting a riot. He flees to Canada, where he is apprehended and returned to the U.S. by Canadian authorities. November 15, 1902 Gennaro Rubino attempts to murder King Leopold II of Belgium as he returns in a procession from a memorial service for his recently deceased wife, Marie Henriette. All three of Rubino's shots miss the monarch's carriage, and he is quickly subdued by the crowd and taken into police custody. He is sentenced to life imprisonment and dies in prison in 1918. May 31, 1906 Catalan anarchist Mateu Marl tries to kill King Alfonso XIII of Spain and Princess Victoria Eugenie of Battenberg after their wedding by throwing a bomb into the wedding procession following the ceremony. The monarchs are unhurt, but some bystanders and horses are killed. Marl is apprehended two days later and commits suicide while being transferred to prison. February 1, 1908 Manuel Bica and Alfredo Costa shoot to death King Carlos I of Portugal and his son, Crown Prince Luis Felipe, respectively, in the Lisbon regicide. Both Bica and Costa, who are sympathetic to a republican movement in Portugal that includes anarchist elements, are shot dead by police officers. March 28, 1908 Anarchist Selig Cohen aka Selig Silverstein tries to throw a bomb in New York City's Union Square. A premature explosion kills a bystander named Ignatz Hildebrand and mortally wounds Cohen, who dies a month later. Several contemporary pictures taken after the explosion show the mortally wounded Silverstein with his victim next to him. November 14, 1909 Argentine anarchist militant Simón Radovitsky assassinates Buenos Aires chief of police, Lieutenant Ramón Falcon by a throwing a bomb at his carriage while Falcon was returning from a deceased fellow officer's funeral. The assassination prompted President Figueroa Alcorta to declare a state of siege and pass the Social Defense Law, which allowed the deportation of anarchist agitators. September 14, 1911 Dmitry Bagrov shoots Russian Prime Minister Pyotr Stolypin at the Kiev Opera House in the presence of Tsar Nicholas II and two of his daughters, Grand Duchesses Olga and Tatiana. Stolypin dies four days later, and Bagrov is hanged on September 28. November 12, 1912 Anarchist Manuel Pardiñas shoots Spanish Prime Minister José Canalijas dead in front of a Madrid bookstore. Pardiñas then immediately turns the gun on himself and commits suicide. March 18, 1913 Alexandros Sheenas shoots dead King George I of Greece while the monarch is on a walk near the White Tower of Thessaloniki. Sheenas is captured and tortured, he commits suicide on May 6 by jumping out the window of the gendarmerie, although there is speculation that he could have been thrown to his death. July 4, 1914 A bomb being prepared for use at John D. Rockefeller's home at Terrytown, New York explodes prematurely, killing three anarchists, Arthur Karen, Carl Hansen and Charles Berg, and an innocent woman, Mary Chavez. October 13 and November 14, 1914 Gallianists, radical followers of Luigi Galliani, explode two bombs in New York City after police forcibly disperse a protest by anarchists and communists at John D. Rockefeller's home in Terrytown. In 1914, Marie Gans threatens to shoot John D. Rockefeller as she arrives with a crowd and a loaded pistol in front of the Standard Oil Building in Manhattan. He is not in. July 22, 1916 San Francisco Preparedness Day bombing, 10 persons killed, 40 injured. November 24, 1917 Nine policemen and a bystander in Milwaukee, Wisconsin killed when a time bomb left at a Catholic church by Galleonists was taken to a police station, where it exploded. April to June 1919 to 1919 United States anarchist bombings 
April 28 – Mayor Ole Hansen of Seattle, Washington, receives a galleonist mail bomb diffused. April 29 – A galleonist mail bomb intended for U.S. Senator Thomas W. Hardwick explodes, burning a servant and blowing off her hands. June 2 – Galleonist Carlo Valdinosi killed when his bomb intended for the Washington, D.C. home of U.S. Attorney General A. Mitchell Palmer explodes prematurely. June 3 – New York City night watchman William Boehner killed by a galleonist bomb placed at a judge's house. September 16, 1920 – The Wall Street bombing kills 38 and wounds 400 in the Manhattan Financial District. Galleonists are believed responsible, particularly Mario Buda, the group's principal bombmaker, although the crime remains officially unsolved. March 8, 1921. Three anarchists on a motorcycle shoot dead Spanish Prime Minister Eduardo Dato Aradier in Puerta de Alcala, Madrid. July 14, 1922. Gustave Bouvet attempts to kill French President Alexander Millerand. May 25, 1926. Sholem Schwartzberg assassinates Simon Petlyura, head of the government in exile Ukrainian People's Republic, in Paris. After an eight day trial, he is acquitted by the jury, who has been convinced of Schwartzbod's just cause. The core of his defense was that he was avenging the deaths of victims of pogroms by Petlyura's forces. October 31, 1926. Antio Zamboni, the 11th of April 1911 to the 31st of October 1926, was a 15-year-old anarchist who tried to assassinate Benito Mussolini in Bologna by shooting at him during the parade celebrating the march on Rome. Zamboni, whose shot missed Mussolini, was immediately attacked and lynched by nearby squadristi, fascist squads. 1926 to 1928. Several bombings in Argentina organized by the Italian anarchist Severino Di Giovanni, in the frame of the international campaign supporting Sacco and Vanzetti and against fascist Italy's interests in Argentina. Bombings of the U.S. Embassy, of the Buenos Aires offices of City Bank of New York and Bank of Boston, and of the Italian Consulate on May 23, 1928. September 27, 1932. A dynamite-filled package bomb left by galleonists destroys Judge Webster Thayer's home in Worcester, Massachusetts, injuring his wife and a housekeeper. Judge Thayer had presided over the trials of galleonists Sacco and Vanzetti. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Modern. May 1968. Riots in Paris. The New York-based group Black Mask becomes up against the wall motherfuckers and carry out artistic propaganda of the deed. October 8, 1969. The U.S. group Weatherman's first event is to blow up a statue in Chicago, Illinois, dedicated to police casualties in the 1886 Haymarket riot. The Days of Rage riots then occur in Chicago during four days. 287 Weatherman members are arrested, and one of them killed. December 6, 1969. Several Chicago police cars parked in a precinct parking lot at 3600 North Halsted Street, Chicago, are bombed. The Weather Underground Organization WUO later stated in their book Prairie Fire that they had perpetrated the explosion to protest the shooting deaths of the Illinois Black Panther Party leaders Fred Hampton and Mark Clark two days earlier by police officers. 1970-1972 the British Angry Brigade Group carries out at least 25 bombings police numbers. Almost all property damage, although one person was slightly injured. September 12, 1970. The WUO helps Dr. Timothy Leary, LSD scientist, break out and escape from the California Men's Colony Prison. October 8, 1970. Bombing of Marin County, California, U.S. Courthouse in retaliation for the deaths of Jonathan Jackson, William Christmas, and James McLean. October 10, 1970. The Queens Courthouse is bombed to express support for the New York prison riots. October 14, 1970. The Harvard Center for International Affairs is bombed to protest the war in Vietnam. September 28, 1973. The ITT headquarters in New York and Rome, Italy are bombed in response to ITT's role in the September 11, 1973 Chilean coup. November 6, 1973. The U.S. group Symbionese Liberation Army SLA assassinates Oakland, California Superintendent of Schools Dr. Marcus Foster and badly wounded his deputy Robert Blackburn. 
December 20, 1973 Spanish Prime Minister Luis Carrero Blanco was assassinated in Madrid as his car drove over a bomb planted by the Basque separatist group ETA. September 11, 1974. Bombing of Anaconda Corporation, part of the Rockefeller Corporation in retribution for Anaconda's involvement in Pinochet's coup exactly a year before. December 1975. Greek organization Revolutionary Organization November 17 allegedly responsible of the assassination of CIA station chief in Athens Richard Welch. According to a December 2005 article by Cleanthus Grivas, journalist in Prota Tema, Sheepskin, Gladios branch in Greece, was in fact behind the killing. U.S. State Department denied Grivas' allegations in January 2006. January 28, 1975. Bombing of the U.S. State Department in response to escalation in Vietnam. April 21, 1975. The remaining members of the SLA rob the Crocker National Bank in Carmichael, California and kill Myrna Opsal, a bank customer, in the process. September 1975. Bombing of the Kennecott Corporation in retribution for Kennecott's involvement in the Chilean coup two years prior. May 1, 1979. French Group Action Direct carries out a machine gun attack on the employer's Federation headquarters. May 30, 1982. The Canadian group Direct Action aka Squamish 5 set off a large bomb at an electricity transmission project. Four transformers were wrecked beyond repair, but no one was injured. 1984. Bomb attacks of the Dutch organization RARA Radical Anti-Racist Action against the Van Hoysch Monument Van Hoysch was the Dutch commander during the Aceh War. 1985-1987, Dutch RARA is responsible of several bomb attacks on the Macro Wholesale Stores, which was active in South Africa. 1985. Action Direct assassinates René Audrin, in charge of the state's arms dealing. 1986. Georges Bess, CEO of Renault but before leader of Eurodif Nuclear Consortium in which Iran had a 10% stake, is allegedly assassinated by Action Direct although this thesis would be questioned, in particular by investigative journalist Dominique Lorenz. June 28, 1988. U.S. Naval and Defense Attaché in Greece William Nardine's assassination is reinvindicated by the revolutionary organization November 17. September 26, 1989. Assassination of Pavlos Bakayanis, parliamentary leader of the Conservative New Democracy Party, by Greek group Revolutionary Organization 17 November. November 13, 1991. Dutch RARA blow up the House of State Secretary of Justice A. A. D. Costo. June 30, 1993. Dutch RARA are responsible of bomb attacks on the Dutch Ministry of Social Affairs and Employment. November 30, 1999. Black blocks destroy the storefronts of Gap, Starbucks, Old Navy, and other multinationals with retail locations in downtown Seattle during the anti-WTO demonstrations. June 8, 2000 Assassination of British military attaché Stephen Saunders in Greece. Members of 17N are arrested. In December 2005, Cleanthus Grivas, journalist in Prota Tema, claims that Sheepskin, Gladio's branch in Greece, was in fact behind the killing, along with the first violent act of 17N, Richard Welch CIA station chief's assassination in 1975. U.S. State Department denied Grivas' allegations in January 2006. 2001. After the July Genoa G8 summit, the Publix Theater Caravan, part of the No Border Network, is accused of being part of a criminal organization called black blocks although such black blocks are not organized and only form themselves on a spontaneous manner during demonstrations as in the older autonomist movement 2006 the swedish invisible party announces its dissolution topic <laughs> justifications The United Nations Security Council, acting under Chapter 7 of the UN Charter defined the term terrorism as consisting of 
criminal acts, including against civilians, committed with the intent to cause death or serious bodily injury, or taking of hostages, with the purpose to provoke a state of terror in the general public or in a group of persons or particular persons, intimidate a population or compel a government or an international organization to do or to abstain from doing any act. The use of political violence is understood by its proponents in the frame of a general conception of the state as the control apparatus of the bourgeoisie, and of class struggle as a form of effective civil war. Thus, as anarchists often put it, "...peace without justice isn't peace," but war between exploited and exploiters. In their eyes, this "...social war," morally legitimizes the use of violence against broader "...social violence." This view, of course, is not shared by pacifist libertarians. Rioting is thus justified as a means to enhance class consciousness and prepares the objective conditions for a popular uprising Georges Sorel, 1906. Even those who are not opposed to the political use of violence for theoretical reasons as pacifist anarchists are may consider it unnecessary or strategically dangerous, in certain conditions. Many note that the events of 1970s showed clearly how terrorism may be used to influence politics in the frame of the strategy of tension by a state and its secret services, through agents provocateurs and false flag terrorist attacks. In Italy and other countries, the years of lead led to reinforced anti-terrorism legislation, criticized by social activists as a new form of Lois Scolurates which were used to repress the whole of the socialist movement, not just militant groups. Many also note that the rare cases in which terrorism has achieved its revolutionary aims are mostly in the context of national liberation struggles, while the urban guerrilla movements have all failed Gerard Chalian. <laughs> <laughs> Armed propaganda Armed propaganda is a type of propaganda used by revolutionary organizations that uses destructive, but ideally not lethal violence to make a political point known to the public and eventually gain supporters for its cause. The term was used in the United States by the Weather Underground and the Black Panther Party to describe some of their bombings. Although armed propaganda can use guns or bombs, its proponents argue that its goal is debatably different from that of pure terrorism. United States Dan Berger, in his book about the Weatherman organization, Outlaws in America, describes the planning section for a townhouse bombing by the group, describing the action as, "...armed propaganda". <laughs> Latin America The term has been applied to guerrillas in Latin America in their revolutionary literature. Iran Bizan Jazani used a translation of the term to describe armed struggle in Iran, particularly the Fadai guerrillas. See also Civil disobedience V. Comics References Topic. Bibliography Abador, Mitchell, ed. 2016. Death to Bourgeois Society, The Propagandists of the Deed. PM Press. ISBN 978-1629631127. Christie, Stewart, Granny Made Me an Anarchist, General Franco, The Angry Brigade and Me, 2002. Cockburn, Alexander. October 9 to 10, 2004. Torture, terrorism, and the rise of the Spanish anarchists. There are no innocents. Counterpunch. Coolsat, Rick. September 2004. Anarchist outrages. Le Monde Diplomatique. Gage, Beverly. 2009. The day Wall Street exploded: A story of America in its first age of terror. New York: Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0199759286 Hansen, Anne, Direct Action, Memoirs of an Urban Guerrilla, AK Press, 2001 Billington, James. Fire in the Minds of Men, 1999 Merriman, John 2009. The Dynamite Club. Boston, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. 
ISBN 0 618 55598 6. Turgenev, Ivan, Fathers and Sons, 1862, paints the portrait of Russian nihilists. Topic. External links Associative Press Agency – Information on Political Prisoners <laughs>